In, diesem in this video you will learn how to find large predatory fish and how to use the different transmission cones of the deeper for this job. Let's go! Wie kommt dein Köder nun zum Fisch? How do you get your bait to the fish? What do we mean by this? You need to know the position of the fish to cast right where it is. In addition, knowing how deep the fish is swimming helps you choose the right lure. Where is the fish? Down here we can see a very nice fish arch. It looks slightly red which means it is well placed under the deeper and therefore has a strong signal. The next question when our deeper is in place is, where is the fish in relation to the arch? To answer that, we need some basics on how fish behave. The first thing we need to know is, fish do not hunt aimlessly. Predators like pike, pike perch and perch have an attack pattern or a hunting strategy. In the case of pikes for example, they have a reaction distance, as learned from our book Finding Fish, the smart way, the pike. So, the pike is in its refuge and depending on the site, it pays a certain attention when the prey is at given distance. If the water is very clear, the pike can see up to 4 or 5 meters, that is round about 15 feet, away. However, it has no interest in preys that are that far. The reason is very simple, the prey is quick, and as soon as it sees the pike, it flees. So, the pike has to be even faster to pursue and catch up. Thus, there is a reaction distance where the pike is alert to possible prey fish. Nevertheless, this does not mean that it will necessarily attack. First of all, it stays alert, namely to the front, the sides and also above it. Then there is a strike distance, that is, the distance between the pike and the prey, where the pike makes a decision like, now I probably have the highest chance to capture my prey. That is, because predators do not like to waste energy. They do not randomly attack all preys, rather they focus on the preys, where they will put the least effort to capture. This means, when the pike is hunting, it knows it will use less energy for hunting than for feeding. In other words, what amount of energy can be extracted from the prey? The pike's strike distance depends on the prey. For roach, perch or minnow, it amounts to a few centimeters or inches. Because these are very agile, the pike allows them to get relatively close, or it is only interested in those fish that are right under its nose. This distance is between 20 and 60 centimeters, or 8 and 25 inches, above it or to the sides. Now this is important if we recall our picture, where is our deeper? And there is a fish arch, which is located in an area of 2 to 4 meters, that is 6 to 12 feet, around the deeper. So, if I know that the pike needs a strike distance of a few centimeters or inches, then there is no point in pulling ahead my bait 2 meters or 6 feet away from the fish. For this reason, I need a relatively precise idea of where the fish is relative to my deeper, and how wide is the area covered by my deeper. Our philosophy in our courses and books is what use is the best fishing technique if you are looking in the wrong spot. With the deeper, this wrong spot is for example, when I cast my bait 2 meters past the pike, because I will not get any attention from it, or perhaps my bait exerts no attack stimulus. Effectively, our bait has to get as close as possible to the predator. How can the deeper therefore help us find the fish and get our bait close enough? Let us quickly recall what we said in one of the first chapters. Sound generates images, the sound waves spread out downwards in a ring form that is shaped like a cone, gets bigger and wider until an echo is created, and we receive a signal which is then displayed to us. However, unlike on the images, we should not think of the cone like a triangle, rather as a club or some sort of baseball bat. This means that we cover a large area which keeps getting larger towards the bottom. So, when I see a fish and keeping in mind that the area increases with increasing depth, having the pike at all possible positions, like say in 8 meters, or 26 feet depth, then it can be here or here, here too is another possibility, or even here. We always see fish arches on our deepers display. In practice, when we see an arch like here below from our deeper, this means we can cast in all possible directions, if we chose the wide beam angle setting. This means that the probability of missing the pike is relatively high, as we do not know how far off the pike is to the left, to the right, to the front or to the back of the deeper. If we now set up the narrow beam angle on our smartphone app for the deeper, then we will surely miss out pikes and logically, they will not be displayed. 
If we can see an arch with the narrow setting, then we can relatively well estimate the pike's position, or how close it is to the deeper. But we will probably not see all the pikes because of the smaller range. As a result, we can now use the narrow beam to estimate relatively well where the pike is or how close it is to the deeper, but we will not see all the pikes underneath because of the smaller range. We have the following advantage with the narrow beam. If we see a fish with this narrow setting, then it is more likely for it to be somewhere near the deeper, and we can cast directly at the predator. So, when we see an arch, we can easily estimate the distance because of the close range, which in turn reduces our number of casts. How do we now make a strategic use of both beam angles? With the wide beam, we can cover a larger area and see more fish, which we would simply miss with the narrow beam. On the other hand, we can relatively well assess that the fish is near the deeper with the narrow beam. In a practical sense, we first choose the wide beam when we are at a hot spot. So, we cast our deeper in and receive a lot of information. As we look at the result on the screen, there are probably a couple of fish arches or maybe just one, but we are sure of one thing, there is fish underneath. The next step is to switch to the narrow beam. We have to keep in mind that we have to cast often. We have to throw to the left, cast out with some offset, once more besides, again one meter or three feet off, another meter or three feet to the side, until at some point, we are able to capture the arch, which we previously captured with the wide beam, and can cast there directly a few times trying to get the fish. In summary we can say, if you are at a hot spot, cast a couple of times with the wide beam angle in different directions. Once you have seen fish arches, you should confirm them with the narrow beam angle. In other words, you can better estimate in which area the fish is more likely to be, and then cast it in a targeted manner. Anzuwerfen.